It's my great pleasure to introduce my mentor, Judith May, and the ever gracious and elegant Judith May will talk to us about Arnie Smokler, the founder of our organization. Wow, this was a terrific opening to the 20th anniversary of Ed Forbes. And good morning, everyone. It is fitting that we begin the 20th Ed Forum with a few words about Arnie Smokler. He was the founder of the IWMF, and I'd like to tell you just a little about his life in four minutes. Um, Arnie was a retired pharmacist, and he was diagnosed in 1994 with Waldenstrom's. And as he had a very inquisitive mind, he went right to the internet and was searching for information on Waldenstrom's, and he found very little. And he found there was no patient organization. And he contacted NORD. I don't know how many know of NORD, but it stands for the uh, National Organization for Rare Diseases. And he asked them for a list of any members they had with uh, Waldenstrom's. And they sent him 21 names. And so he contacted those 21 patients, and that was the start. And he uh, decided to start holding support groups at his house. And so those who lived in the Springfield, Virginia area, or were willing to drive some distance, they, they came. His first meeting had seven patients out of the 21. Uh, then as the list of patients grew, because he also went to the area oncologist's offices, and he left a card with his name and phone number, and asked them to please give this card to uh, their patients with Waldenstrom's, and, and they did, and patients started calling him. And I was one who uh, got his name from my oncologist, and I called him. At the time, he was grocery shopping, and he said, I can't talk to you right now, but I'll call you right back, and he did, and that's what everyone has told me over the years. If Arnie couldn't talk to you right then, he called you back as soon as he could. And his, he had a reputation for this. Uh, he started a newsletter. He started so many of the things that we are carrying on with today. The newsletter, the lifeline, he had a telephone list of people that new patients could call. And uh, he had a vision for a patient organization that he pursued. And he established the website. He, uh, in 96, he held uh, a conference in Virginia which brought out 75 patients. His list kept growing from oncologists, from NORD, from word of mouth, <clears throat> and it grew quickly. The next year, he held a conference again in Virginia uh, with 200 attending. And by the end of that year, 1998, there were 900 members. It wasn't called IWMF then, it was called the Waldenstrom Macroglobulinemia Support Group, the WMSG. And then, uh, he actually had to change the name because at the end of 98, there were 10 support groups in the United States and one in the UK. And that one in the UK made it an international organization. So he changed the name to the International Waldenstrom's Macroglobulinemia Foundation, and it was then incorporated as a nonprofit. And we were off and running. And the 1998 conference held in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, that, was, that name was changed. They just call, used to call it just a, a Walmstrom conference. Then it became the Ed Forum, which we continue with today. So at that conference in Atlanta, Georgia, he introduced Ben Rood as his vice president. And he also had asked for nominations weeks ahead of time of people who would like to be on the board of trustees because he needed 12 trustees. And people submitted their names or were nominated by friends. And everyone nominated had to stand up and give their qualifications and then there was a vote taken. I was one of them. I, I became a trustee that year. Uh, so Arnie just never stopped. He was always thinking, what, what's next? What else can we do? And so with that first board of trustees, we right away went into the, the hard work of organizing, um, having an infrastructure and committees and board policies and patient services. 
And we got a lot of things going within a year, year and a half. And then suddenly, um, Arnie announced that he would be stepping down and, and fully retiring to his Florida home. And so uh, he also, you know, said that he left an energized board for us to continue on with the, with the work and the beginning of educational programs and a base for growing contributions. So he, he was just one of a kind, bigger than life, and we can all be very grateful to Arnie for his vision, his leadership, his perseverance, and his dedication to all Waldenstrom patients. And I am confident that if Arnie could look down from above today, he would be very happy with what's happened here. And so, um, this might sound goofy to some, but I want to wave to Arnie. <laughs> Thank you, he was one of a kind. <laughs>